Yeah. Um, thank you, ma'am. It has been uh, an honor and uh, nice to share the platform. Uh, thanks to Dr. Anuj, uh, Dr. Verma, and my friend Dr. Sinwas Murthy. Um, edible oil. Uh, this looks to be a very common uh, sort of uh, a topic, uh, but not that common as we think. My idea is uh, at the end of around 15 minutes, at least 85% of the doctors who are listening to my lecture should change their kitchen arrangement when they go back. And I'm sure uh, it will probably compel them uh, to, to do that. Now, let us see which are the oils that we would like to choose. You see that in India, uh, right from mustard oil, coconut oil, corn oil, uh, cotton seed oil, olive oil, palm oil, peanut oil, rapeseed oil, canola oil. It's called canola in US. Um, rapeseed actually is in US, but uh, canola is in, in UK because Britishers are very conservative. They don't like the word rape. So they want to call it as canola oil. So in US, you can easily call it as a rapeseed. And even in India, safflower oil, sesame, soybean, sunflower. So now let us see what exactly is the scenario in India. You'd be surprised to know that the maximum used oil, around less than, just less than 50% is palm oil, only to be followed by the soybean oil, to be followed by the canola oil. <clears throat> now, if you just see here, what about the production in India? You know that palm oil is imported into India. Palm oil is not produced in India. Now, amongst the oil produced in India, you can see that here, it's a mustard oil followed by the groundnut oil that you can see in this segment. <clears throat> now, if you see here, oil consumption in India with 135 crore population and, and an extensive area, up north is different, down south is different. Even in Karnataka, I come from North Karnataka. Uh, in our area, we eat a lot of jawar roti, whereas 100 kilometers away from my area is Sirsi, uh, a belt where there is uh, a sea belt. So you can see that they eat a lot of uh, fish uh, and, and uh, rice. So for breakfast, it is fish and rice. For their lunch, it is fish and rice. And you are not wrong in guessing, for dinner, it is fish and rice. So when there is such a huge variation, you can make out that for example, up north, it is much of a deep fried like samosas. And even in Gujarat, it is deep fried. West Bengal, you, we all suppose in India that the West Bengali brains are very clever. Uh, it is because they're supposed to eat a lot of fish. And we know fish is extremely good as, as a brain tonic, which you will see in my few slides later on. And what is important, they don't deep fry the fish. <clears throat> that is the beauty of the West Bengal diet. They eat baked fish or they use very lesser amount of oil. Unlike in Karnataka, for example, Kerala, for example, the fish is deep fried. And coconut oil, we know that very much uh, confined to Kerala. And we'll come back to coconut oil controversy in a, in a while. And of course, in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, uh, we know all the rice, vegetables, idli, dosa, etc. Uh, even in Karnataka. So this is how the... <clears throat> pattern is. Now we need to know <clears throat> what are the types of oil that we talk of. We talk something called as a cold pressed oil. The oil to be preferred is a cold pressed oil. This is, this is the take home message from this lecture. Now cold pressed oil means at a temperature not to exceed 80 degrees. So it is not actually cold. There is some amount of uh, friction between the uh, seeds that generates the heat. One of the best examples, however, is the extra virgin olive oil, uh, which you know that if you go to the market, there is a pressing date and thereby an expiry date. After cold pressed oil, there is something called expeller pressed oil. <clears throat> this is almost like a cold pressed oil, but here there is an expeller, expeller where there is a machine and there is a cavity and there is an intense friction and a pressure uh, to extract the oil from the seeds. The heat generated is around 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Those of us who come from the village <clears throat> very well know the original cold pressing on the left side. It is there even in some of the villages in north and some parts of south. And this is mechanical oil uh, pressing. And what are the benefits of the cold pressed oil? Why should we be uh, consuming cold pressed oil? 
They are loaded with essential antioxidants, phospholipids. They are rich in vitamin C and E, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory properties. They boost the immune system, contain a high concentration of the omega-3 fatty acids, which is essential for health and also the brain function. They balance hypertension. They contain cancer-fighting properties and suitable to add for any type of meal. People are under the wrong impression that cold-pressed oil is not available in the market. It is available. Coconut oil, sesame oil, groundnut oil, sunflower oil. You can get all these as <coughs> cold-pressed oil. Now, refined oil is a curse to the modern people like all of us. They use chemicals. They are harmful. All these are treated with acid, purified with an alkali. They are bleached. They are neutralized. They are deodorized to remove the smell of some of uh, the uh, uh, seeds that they use. Now, is refined oil harmful? Uh, it is supposed to be harmful. But however, the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India, being fed up of so much of rounds going on in the social media, they said refined oils are totally safe to use as cooking oil. <clears throat> you can see here. There are one to seven steps. I don't want to go into the details. The only thing is from the high temperature that the oil seeds like groundnut are exposed, they then go through the hexane solvent. What is hexane? See that it is produced by refining crude petroleum oil. The, the um, oil that you use here, uh, refined oil goes through this petroleum extract. Then, then it resulting mixture goes through being uh, through the phosphate, then there is water decoming, then it is neutralized for any uh, smell or any odor uh, with a caustic soda, then it is bleached. And look at the final one is a deodorization. Pressurized steam at 500 degree Fahrenheit is used to remove volatile compounds. That's when you get formation of trans fatty acids. <clears throat> Therefore, making oil is simple. Then why do we need refined oil? Because to make a refined oil, you don't need good quality seeds. Whereas cold pressed needs good quality seeds. Therefore, you don't need uh, that here. So they can use even substandard oil seeds to do this. Palm oil, we know we export it, is a 45% is used in India. A big, and even some of the uh, oils are mixed with palm oil, unfortunately. Uh, there, is an, there is no check at all on this. Uh, very difficult to confirm this, but somehow it goes on in the media that the oil that we consume in our houses is mixed with palm oil to make it cheaper and more easily available. Trans fats are a curse. There are two types of trans fats. One is naturally occurring, which we see in the milk that we drink uh, that contains from the animals that we get. That has got a natural trans fat, but this is a good trans fat because it has a different type of configuration than the artificial trans fat. What is artificial trans fat that is created in an industrial process where hydrogen is added to the liquid vegetable oil. Therefore, trans fats are partially hydrogenated oils. And when you reuse this oil, it produces more of trans fats. Trans fats are very bad. Excellent review in New England Journal of Medicine 2006 said, on a per calorie basis, trans fats are the highest in any category causing the cardiovascular um, problems or atherosclerotic cardiovascular problem. And they suggested use less than 1% of the total energy intake. So from 2018 onwards, FDA said the zero content should be trans fat. But when you read it as zero, it is not zero. You are allowed to use up to 0.5 gram of trans fat. So whenever you go for shopping, make certain you look at the trans fat content. <clears throat> we need to know what is a smoke point. Smoke point is something where when you try to heat the oil um, for any of your cooking, decomposition occurs. And finally, you reach a point where fat is broken down to glycerol, free fatty, added, free fatty acids, and produce a bluish smoke. And this is called a smoke point. Then what is a flash point? Beyond smoke point, you start getting fire from the oil when it is mixed with the air. That is flash point. Now, there are many oils here. We can say I don't want to go into all this. Only thing to know is high smoke point 
uh, is used for deep frying. For example, groundnut oil, sunflower oil. Medium to high smoke point is good for oven cooking or stir frying. Examples are canola, rapeseed or grapeseed oil. Medium smoke point is for sauce or low heat baking like sesame. Sesame is extensively used in Karnataka incident. And soya bean, of course, in the north it is used. When you want, don't want any heat, you should use the flax seed um, for such preparation. Now, when we talk of PUFA and MUFA, these are the two things on which the oil that we consume depends. What is PUFA? It is polyunsaturated fatty acids and has a two component. It has got a linoleic or N6, alpha linoleic or N3. N6 is, is predominant in all the cells of the body, while the nervous tissue has a very high levels of long chain N3 ALA. What is important is we need a proper balance of PUFA, N6 and N3 for the oil to be beneficial so that there's a proper functioning of the vascular system, immune, nervous, renal, and even for the early human development in the embryo. Now, PUFAs are particularly N3 PUFAs, very important because they increase insulin sensitivity, increase peripheral glucose utilization, decrease adiposity, and are hence anti atherogenic But N6 PUFA, unfortunately, when you use in a very high level, uh, it can cause a uh, low level of HDL. Therefore, a bit of more uh, MUFA is better than a bit of more PUFA. And then <clears throat> it is very important here in this slide, Nestle is a very clever uh, company. Uh, they said the in embryo or whatever, when they come out, uh, the children need a much amount of DHA. So they thought that the fish contains a lot of these N3 and they found out that these boys, when they were studied later on, a number of studies were also linking omega-3 EPA DHA found in oily fish for thinking, reasoning, and remembering abilities, cognitive function in infants and in the elderly. Therefore, Nestle tries to add DHA and EPA. And that's why all pregnant women, are <clears throat> those who can take non-vegetarian, are asked to eat the fish. Now, this is the omega fatty acid content, a very important slide because <clears throat> you can see here, omega-3 ALA is in walnuts, flaxseed, soybean, and canola. Otherwise, major source of omega-3 is EPA and a DHA, which is a fatty fish. There are many vegetarians who do not get EPA and a DHA. They need supplement from outside. The only vegetarian source of ALA is walnuts and flax seeds. Omega-6, you saw that N6 is either linoleic acid or gamma linoleic acid. They are found in corn, safflower, soya bean. And omega-9 is oleic acid found in the olive oil. So we need both MUFA and the PUFA. We know both of them lower LDL, they raise the HDL, and has got a bit of a mixed activity on the triglyceride. So looking at this, <clears throat> AHA recommends that the total fat should be around 25 to 35% and saturated fatty acids should not be more than 10%. MUFA around 10 to 15%, PUFA around 10%. In LAI, Lipid Association of India, we also formed, uh, this appeared in JAPI 2020, and we confined that saturated fat should be around 10%, trans fat should not be there, MUFA is around 10%, and PUFA is around 8 to 10 percent. So with this, let us see which are the oils that LAI prefers and you should be using at home. Mustard oil is a near ideal oil. Please note there is no ideal oil, like there is no ideal antihypertensive, there is no ideal uh, anti-diabetic drug. Therefore, mustard oil is a near ideal because it has 70 percent MUFA and 22 percent PUFA and much of it is oleic acid. And because of this, what happened in, in the United States, the must, mustard oil contains high content of eruic acid. <clears throat> With eruic acid, this, when they studied in the rats, there was a cardiac lipidosis. So immediately the FDA uh, had uh, an acute uh, uh, sort of knee-jerk response and they said, ban the mustard oil. But 
Later on, studies show that because of the inefficient activation of uric acid, uracil coenzyme A in rats, which doesn't occur in, uh, in human beings, uh, that was the problem why there was a retention of cardiac lipid. Therefore, it's important to know that uh, later on, uh, mustard oil is now extensively used in the United States. It is being cleared for usage there. <clears throat> so let us see after the mustard oil is the groundnut oil. Groundnut oil is very common in South India and even also in the Chinese cookeries. Uh, it has very uh, predominant, it's a monounsaturated fat. Smoke point is very good, 440 degree Fahrenheit. And in some people, there can be peanut allergy, especially cold pressed peanuts. In India, this is not common. Nowadays, if we do see this uh, sort of allergy to peanuts uh, in quite a few children. Have, but one should note that cold pressed peanut oil is very dangerous for who are uh, allergic to uh, the peanuts. Rice brine oil is also a very favorite oil uh, by Lipid Association of India. After mustard oil um, and the groundnut oil, we prefer rice bran oil because again, it is predominantly monounsaturated and you can see that good amount of mufa, good amount of pufa. It also contains originol, this is added extra, which is an antioxidant that reduces absorption of cholesterol and increases its excretion. And of course, olive oil is, is extremely because of the Mediterranean diet and the posher people continues to use olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil is a cold pressed olive oil. Why it is called extra virgin, I don't know, but it is a cold pressed oil. It is definitely predominant type is monounsaturated. This is a premium oil because of its high price. What about the taste? What about the color? That is, it depends on which area it is grown, like the wine. That's why olive oil has some um, sort of hyped high price because it depends on where the olive is grown. It is like the wine in certain parts, like in Italy, the wine is more famous than American um, wine, for example. So the same thing happens with olive oil. So extra virgin olive oil can be even used for uh, the frying also. A palm oil we know is very saturated um, oil, but unfortunately it is mixed up with many oils in many parts of the world. It's a very favorite oil because it is very cheaper. Uh, it is rich red in color, but because of the beta carotene. And once you process the palm oil, that color is gone and it comes to almost like a, a light yellow color. Coconut oil, a tremendous controversy. Let us try why it is a controversy. You can see that coconut oil, almost 90% is saturated fat. And you see that circle there. And this is extracted from the flesh of coconut. But what is good here? This fat is a medium chain triglyceride and not a long chain triglyceride. And we know that the medium chain triglycerides are lighter, more soluble than the long chain ones. They are not digested by our bodies. They are directly absorbed into the blood and are not stored as body fat. Now, in coconut oil, uh, please watch this slide very carefully. It is only the virgin coconut oil that is supposed to be good and not the other oils. So it has to be a cold extracted virgin coconut oil. Why is that? Because the medium chain triglycerides in the cold pressed oil are supposed to be having a lauric acid. And this lauric acid is easily hydrolyzed by various lipases in the GI tract. And recently it has been found that the lauric acid present in the um, cold uh, uh, um, coconut oil uh, is responsible for the reverse cholesterol transport. Therefore, the present study indicates that after all, following the Aronach uh, Sharan's study, uh, the coconut oil isn't that bad at all like it was thought before, if you are using a cold pressed coconut oil. <clears throat> and of course, this is a very interesting study. They compared butter with coconut and olive oil. Very interesting. Butter had LDL concentrations were significantly increased compared to coconut and olive oil. Between the coconut and olive oil, 
there was no difference in the change in ldl content in the coconut compared to olive oil all in all they said the coconut oil a uh, bit better than olive oil and definitely much better than the uh, butter now this is a graph all of us are very much used to go to the bottom down there look at the uh, kerala uh, where the the highest uh, prevalence of coronary artery disease and we claim it to be coconut oil coconut oil is still true if it is not cold pressed so why there is such a high frequency high prevalence of coronary artery disease is said to be that uh, maybe it's connected with some diet although there are a lot of uh, uh, variations in the uh, interpretation sunflower oil is polyunsaturated fat predominantly produced by pressing the sunflower seeds very commonly used easily available commercially sunflower oil is very much used especially in the uh, recent times and again of course the soybean oil again polyunsaturated sesame oil is again very much rich in polyunsaturated definitely a good oil good combination of mono and poly one could definitely prefer the sesame oil a ghee uh, well uh, lipid association of india allows 1 teaspoon ghee if at all you are interested to take it we are allowed 3 teaspoon oil per day so 1 teaspoon ghee means you are allowed to use 2 teaspoon of any other oil ghee is of course a clarified butter is predominant in saturated fat but somehow they say that the desi ghee got from the desi cow is supposed to be a good ghee lots of studies controversies so we didn't want to go into because most of the indians eat it lipid association of india was rather helpless to add ghee in our diet vanaspati is not good at all it is a partially hydrogenated oil definitely to be deferred and choose your oil carefully i think that mufa rich should be mufa also so groundnut oil is what we prefer which has 50% mufa and around 35% mufa we prefer rice bran oil 42% mufa and 39% mufa and of course a mustard oil uh, which has got around which is an excellent entry mufa therefore you can see here mustard oil is the first oil uric acid causing myocardial lipidosis is not there therefore from 2020 onwards mustard oil is extensively used in united states of america rice bran oil is the next we want to use groundnut oil is next sesame oil sesame oil is the next this is the my kitchen where my wife uses 3 to 4 oils at a time this is a take home message in your kitchen make certain you have 3 to 4 oils rice bran oil for say maybe for seasoning groundnut oil for chapati or whatever you are using olive oil for some rice preparation and maybe sesame oil for some seasoning the idea is use a different oil for different purposes now this has been extensively studied by the food processing and technology so 2019 they say olive oil for serving mixed green mustard oil for vegetable ghee for parathas rice grain for uh, for oil for heating therefore every kitchen must have 3 to 4 oils and every day you get different types of oils you could mix them uh, groundnut or sesame or rice bran you can mix it with soybean if you want to if you don't want to mix in your kitchen you can get ready made uh, mixed oils but unfortunately uh, in india uh, women want to kill the vegetables by over frying indian women love most of them to reuse reuse and reuse the used oil not only they reuse the reused oil they add fresh oil to the used oil making even the fresh oil deadly and most of the women ignore expiry date they say theek hai aur ek do mahina istemal karenge that is not to be entertained because you tend to have a more uh, um, substances that could affect uh, wrongly the cardiovascular system of course nowadays you can just see whenever you are buying an oil look at the mono and the polyunsaturated fat content and this is the pyramid as you can see and we should eat always the oil very uh, moderately and when you whenever go to the shopping make certain you try to buy a good oil always prefer a cold pressed oil in all top end stores you get cold pressed oil otherwise even amazon and such ones they do sell 
excellent cold pressed oil. Otherwise, you can buy a small machine available in many big places where you can cold press the oil yourself at home. So the take home message would be that prefer a cold pressed oil. If you are helpless, of course, we have no choice but to use the refined oil and use the refined oil, of course, uh, probably combination like I just now said.